Hello, I'm Luca Taschini, and I would like to introduce you to the module on climate policy interaction and the role of the market stability reserve. Let me start giving you an overview of the diversity of the European climate policy landscape. In Europe, we've got at the moment three main pillars in terms of climate policy targets. One is on the greenhouse gas reduction, one is on the uptake of energy efficiency, and the last one is related to the expansion of the uh, input of renewable energies in the generation uh, mix. To meet these targets, the European Union has put in place a wide array of uh, policies. Some of them cover the entire European region, so they are already harmonized um, in some sense. One specific example is the European Emission Trading System, and others are country-specific targets or country-specific policies, like feeding tariffs for uh, renewable energy in Germany or the renewable portfolio standards uh, in the UK. Some of these policies reinforce one each other, so they do provide a stronger uh, cost-effective uh, result, but others might lead to inefficiency. For example, if you consider the effect of the combination of uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy uh, deployment, that might have a uh, a negative impact on the overall cost efficiency of the EU ETS. For that reason, the European Commission has been uh, uh, designing a dedicated instrument. I will tell you more about that later. So what does economic theory uh, say about interaction? Well, standard economic theory says that whenever you have one market failure, one uh, externalities, you should uh, tackle that with uh, one policy, one instrument. So if we want to address greenhouse gases, if we want to uh, reduce uh, CO2 uh, emissions, what we should do is simply put a price on carbon. That could be via carbon taxes or carbon trades. Uh, so that immediately uh, questions the uh, in need of uh, uh, supplementary uh, policies. Those policies can in fact lead to redundancy, redundancy or uh, overall uh, inefficiency. For example, if we again consider the case of uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy policy, those can have a negative impact on fixed cap ETSs because they will overall decrease the amount of uh, emission reduction that is uh, needed under the UTS. That would be overall obviously reflected into a lower allowance price that consequently might also weaken the price signal in the long term. And uh, not uh, last, we might also run into the risk of uh, locking ourselves into high emissions uh, uh, infrastructure. So there are also uh, in the uh, standard economic theory strong cases for uh, supplementary policies and that is the case whenever we have economic, behavioral or organizations barriers. All these justify the introduction of uh, a more broader uh, policy mix. Uh, overall what theory says is you need policy coordination. Now, if we look at the uh, case uh, of the European Union, we uh, have studies that said that if we do achieve the reduction, the reduction, the target reduction under the energy efficiency and renewable energy policy, that will lead us to even an excess of 10% on top of the greenhouse gas uh, reduction uh, targets. Uh, that obviously suggests that we should take that into account, we should coordinate policies uh, that would lead in fact to the adjustment of the EU ETS uh, uh, cap. So let me now talk about the role of the uh, market stability reserve and how we came about that uh, uh, decision. So if we look at the particular case of the EU ETS in the past few years, what we observe is an increase in the amount of banked unused permits, that's a green uh, bar uh, that you observe on the uh, graph, and that is just simply a consequence of two uh, effects. On one side we had the economic recession coupled with a relatively strong uh, support of uh, renewables that, as I anticipated earlier, reduce uh, the needed amount of uh, 
uh, reduction. And together with the inability of responding to changes in the economy and policy, that led to an overall reduction in the price. And that was the observed with the uh, blue line. So what the European Commission uh, decided is to tackle that problem by making the emission trading system more resilient to these uh, changes in the economy, policy, and maybe even technology. The first immediate reaction was the introduction of the so-called backloading uh, measure, so shift of a specific amount of allowances from current emission, current allocation to future allocation, and a more structural reform considered the introduction starting from 2019 uh, of the market stability reserve. This is a rule-based mechanism according to which a certain amount of allowances, exactly like the backloading, will be shifted into uh, future allocation. The adjustment will be based on the overall amount of unused permits, the green bar you uh, saw in the previous uh, graph. How exactly the market stability reserve will work? Well, depending on the level of the unused allowances, depending on the level of the bank of the permits, uh, a certain amount, 12% was the original uh, 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 withdrawal rate. Currently, there is discussion about 24% of those permits will be removed from the system and placed into a dedicated reserve. And that will happen whenever the total amount of uh, allowances in circulation will be above 833 million. That number of allow that allowances in the um, uh, reserve will be later possibly injected back into the system if the uh, overall amount uh, of uh, allowances will be below 400 uh, uh, million. Now, let me conclude by saying already something about uh, e expected effects of the MSR. In the past three, four years, the price of the, uh, the emission allowances will hovering around five euro, but now in expectation of a more responsive system, thanks to the MSR, the price has been in fact increasing. So you notice that towards the end of this uh, illustration. So with that, I conclude and I'm looking forward to see you at the module. Thanks a lot.